Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to my review of another San Martin. San Martin is a brand that I have featured on the channel at fairly regular intervals since I bought my first one back in 2018. And my goodness, have they expanded their range since, pumping out new models faster than I can review them. Today it's what they call the SN0033. It's a pretty simple watch, halfway between a vintage pilot and an explorer style tool watch. You'll see what I mean in a minute or two. Now I've spoken about this before, one of these pilot style watches, especially on a bracelet, can make a really interesting daily wear piece. If you need something a bit more robust than a dress watch, but you're not into dive watches. With the added bonus that because they have their origins on the wrists of pilots, they are designed to be super legible and really easy to read at a glance. Now you saw the pop-up, I have featured this watch on the channel before in a top 10 San Martin video, but that was sight unseen. And the brand decided to send me in a couple of these for review. I do not have to send them back. I will of course therefore leave links in the description of the video to the San Martin official store on AliExpress, but you can now buy these from various outlets these days. You don't have to buy from Ali if you don't want to. They are, however, on sale at the moment on AliExpress, so you might like to at least have a look there to check prices before buying elsewhere. Let's flip the camera and have a look at them. And I do mean them. San Martin, for some reason, decided to send me all four of the different dial color versions of this watch over the last couple of months. I think they were keen for me to review it. But what that means is I can show you all four different dial versions. All four are available either on a bracelet or a color matched leather, kind of distressed suede style leather strap today. So you can have a good look at them. They're all good looking watches to be honest. It's a nice piece of crystal. They're all really easy to film. It's a clean, crisp design. Nice bit of color though, and not expensive these either. Talking of price, the bracelet versions normally come in just over 200, the leather straps just under 200, but as mentioned, there is a sale on at the moment, so you are saving quite a chunk off each of those prices. Four dials, leather or bracelet, eight combinations, eight permutations. I'll tell you what my favorites are a bit later on. And I'm sure you can see what I mean when I refer to this one as a kind of vintage pilot come explorer style watch. It's got that big onion slash pumpkin crown, the signature bezel, but it also has Arabics at the 12, 3, 6, and 9, all of those applied, sword hands, big long needle second hand, prominent second hand pushing all the way to the edge, and it's all dial. Pilot's watches tend to have small bezels and big, big dials. Now this one is a sub 40, but it doesn't look or feel like a sub 40 on wrist, I don't think, and that is thanks to that big dial. So if you normally go for a 40 or even slightly larger, don't be put off by this one's diameter dimension because yeah, it's all dial. So I've already given you one of the dimensions, I may as well give you the others. 38 and a half mil in diameter, 12.2 mil thick though with double dome sapphire, 47.7 lug to lug, 20 mils between the lugs, female end links on the bracelet too, quite a taper down to just under 16, back up to just over 17 at the clasp. Sized up for me, I only had to remove two of these links by the way, so if you have a particularly big wrist, you might be better opting for it on the leather strap. Sized up for me, 127 grams. Decent amount of versatility, screw down crown, 100 meters of water resistance, double dome sapphire with some nice AR you saw from those macro shots outside. This one is really, takes a good photo, let's put it that way. And the movement choice, they have gone for the Epson YN55A. Now you're gonna have to take mine and San Martin's word for that because they haven't put a display case back on here. They have put a purely sterile, Stainless steel, all brushed with those indents, easy to remove, but yeah, not particularly fun to look at, is it? Now you may or may not have heard of the Epson YN55, but I'm sure you've heard of a watch that contains it under another guise. It's an Orient in-house movement, and it's the same movement that powers the Orient Kamasu. Now the Kamasu has a day-date complication, this watch has neither of those things, meaning if you pull the crown out to the first position, it's a ghost date position. I can actually feel and just about hear the date wheel, the phantom date wheel 
clicking away when I roll the crown anti-clockwise. You need to pull it out to the second position to get the movement to hack. 22 joules, 40 hour power reserve. It's a very reliable movement, you know, on par with Seiko's 4R NH series of movements. The only difference that I note is it's got a rougher, grittier hand wind, but the Kamasu is a well-loved and well-proven watch, so no issues with this movement whatsoever. No issues either with the standard of finishing on this case and the bracelet. If you've bought or owned a San Martin in the past, you know how good the standard of finish on these watches really is. Yeah, nicely integrated, little coin edge bezel style there. No rattle, no gap between those end links, very solid feeling. They are, of course, solid end links. And we have a three link oyster style, all brushed with female end link. Now the clasp, that is an inlaid hexagon logo, high polished chamfer, double security pusher, milled upper and milled lower, as you can see. However, only two holes of micro adjust. That means it's gonna be hit or miss. Look, that's how much bracelet adjustment you've got. That's how big the links are. So it really should have four holes here. I have to be wearing this one loose as I'm sure most people will as well. I've just found my first complaint for later, haven't I? And it's a really simple, really legible, well-proportioned and well-finished dial and handset also. All those indices, kind of baton indices, oblong batons with rounded ends and the Arabic numerals are applied, as is the San Martin hexagon logo underneath the 12. Only one line of text, automatic, that is it. They haven't overcooked it, they haven't overdone it at all. That keeps the dial really simple. I wouldn't describe it as achingly retro, but it does have a pleasingly old fashioned simplicity to it, I guess. All indices and the two main hands have high polished silver surrounds, just a flat set of hands, but they are large, vintage sword hands as discussed, and a nice long colored second hand. Each of the different color versions has a different color second hand, different to the dial as well that is, but color matched to the five minute markers printed around the outer edge beyond the applied indices. The dials themselves have matte finish allowing those silver surrounds to the indices, the hands and the brand logo to really pop. Overall there's nothing new here, nothing radical here, but the simplicity aids legibility. And that's the same after dark as well. BGW9, plenty of it, applied indices, applied numerals, and the big hour and minute hand all have plenty of BGW9. If I speed it up, 20 minutes, which I always say is like four to five hours of human eye equivalent, everything still nice and legible, as legible after dark as it is during the day. Let's get it on wrist. I do like this black color version, kind of gray black dial, but with red second hand, red color accents, goes nicely with this vintage style, kind of distressed suede leather strap that has the San Martin etching into the buckle and tang there as well. It's double finish as well. There's a kind of bead blasted center pattern adding an extra little bit of texture, yet nicely legible here and a good piece of glass. So I think the black is my favorite color version. This burgundy with yellow accents is my second favorite color version. 12.2, sits slim and flat. Yeah, nice taper on the bracelet as well, even if the clasp is a little bit small. Which brings me neatly onto the moans and niggles section. Two holes, two positions, not really enough. It should be four holes, and I know San Martin do a four hole clasp. In some ways, they're just copying Seiko and Citizen who put these two hole clasps that are about this size and this shape on a lot of their watches. It means you're gonna have to wear it loose. It's not the biggest watch in the world or the heaviest at under 130, but I would have preferred an extra couple of notches of adjustment, and I'm sure most other people would have also. And these distressed suede straps look fantastic out of the box, but they look old when they're new, so when they're not new, they'll look really old, if you see what I mean. They can end up looking pretty ratty pretty quickly, especially if you get them wet, so don't get them wet. You might end up changing it quicker than you otherwise would have a standard leather strap, though. Decent hardware and that should swap over, plus quick release spring bars, meaning that getting rid of this one when the time comes is not gonna be too much of a chore. And that case back is boring. It's okay to put a sterile case back on a homage lookalike watch, I think, particularly a Tudor or Rolex one where they don't have anything on the case back. 
In this case though, it's just a bit cheap. San Martin should be putting the spec sheet, they should be etching their logo, they should be making the case back a bit more of an experience, I think. But choose your color, choose your bracelet option, and choose what time of year you buy it to get the best price, and you end up with a really nice kind of all-round daily watch that certainly offers far better value, far better specs, and far better build quality than you would get from an equivalently priced Seiko Citizen or Orient. So there you have it, well under $200 during a sale. You really can't go wrong with one of these if you like the size and you like the style. It is really easy to read, clean design, great loom, solid bracelet, and a well-known movement. It's not a particularly dramatic watch. If you want drama, then go have a look at some of San Martin's original designs instead. Thank you for making it all the way to the back end of the video. You must be a fan of the brand. In that case, may I suggest you click here or here to see 20 of their best watches. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.